Hello friends, today we are going to build a scroll animation website where images appear from both sides while scrolling down and disappear while scrolling up. So, let's begin with the VS code and create a new folder wherever you want. Name as you wish, I am giving scroll animation and now making all three required files. That is index.html, style.css and script.js. Start with the HTML file containing the index dot. By using a boilerplate, in this case, I'd like to alter the document's name to scroll animation. And now link the CSS below title tag and JavaScript files to the above closed body tag in HTML. For the heading scroll animation, h1 tag. For images, create a box class in the div tag and insert an image in the image tag. Here, I have previously set up an image folder in this instance. I am just copying it into the project folder. Now just an insert image. Ok, now check around the website. Everything is functioning properly thus far. Let's proceed to enhance the picture then. I'm inserting 14 photos, as many as you like. That's all. For HTML, after saving the file, let's move to the browser to check the status of website currently, CSS is required. For a seamless animation effect, use CSS attributes like transform and transition. Google's Roboto font is imported in the first line. All elements box sizing properties are changed to border box in the following line. This implies that padding and borders are included in the elements width and height. The body selector styles the body of the web page. It sets the background color and the font family to Roboto. It also sets the display to flex and the flex direction to column. This means that the contents of the body will be laid out in a single column with the items centered vertically and horizontally. The class box selector selects all elements with the class dot box. These elements are styled with the following properties, sets the display property to flex, aligns the elements of the box element horizontally to the center, aligns the elements of the box element vertically to the center, sets the width of the element to 400 pixels, sets the height of the element to 200 pixels, sets the margin of the element to 10 pixels, adds a box shadow to the element, the box elements are initially hidden, because they have a transform property of translatex, 
This means that they are translated 400% to the right, which effectively hides them. The box elements also have a transition property of transform 0.4 SEs. This means that when the transform property is changed, the change will be animated over a period of 0.4 seconds with an easing out easing function. The box, nth of type, even, rule styles even numbered box elements. These box elements are translated 400% to the left, which effectively hides them. This is done to create a staggered effect as the box elements appear on the page. The box.show rule styles box elements with the show class applied. These box elements are translated 0px, which means that they are visible on the page, the dot box in rule styles images inside of box elements. These images are given a width of 100% and a background size of cover. This means that the images will fill the entire box and will be scaled to fit while maintaining their aspect ratio. Let's start writing JavaScript code efficient way to scroll through a list of elements and add or remove a class from them based on their position on the page. This code gets a list of all elements with the class box using the query selectoral method. This code creates an event listener on the window object for the scroll event. This means that the function checkboxes will be called every time the user scrolls the page. This line of code calls the function checkboxes immediately. This is done to ensure that the function is called at least once, even if the user has not scrolled the page yet. This line of code calculates the trigger bottom value. This value is equal to four-fifths of the viewport height. This line of code iterates over the list of elements and checks if each element's top position is less than the trigger bottom value. If it is, then the function adds the show class to the element. Otherwise, the function removes the show class from the element. The get bounding client rect Method returns an object that contains the size and position of the element relative to the viewport. The top property of this object is the distance from the top of the element to the top of the viewport. The class list property of an element is an object that contains a list of all the classes that are applied to the element. The add and remove Methods of this object can be used to add and remove classes from the element. I appreciate your attention. I trust you had fun with it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to and like on channel. Learn more by attending prompt infotech in Harmoti, Assam.